Hey everybody, I'm Diana Blass here inside Dell's booth at Mobile World Congress. A lot of cool demos on display and who better to talk about all this with than Dell's Sandro Tavares. Hi, how are you? Hi, good, and you? Good, day three. Day three, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just mentioning all the cool demos you have here. What are you, what's Dell really trying to get across here at the show? Yeah, so our main message for the show is that the network's future is here, right? And the approach that we're taking is that with everything that the telecommunications industry has been through, in terms of like the evolution, deploying of new technologies, deployment of 5G, uh, virtualization of some parts of their infrastructure. We believe it's time to actually take a wider approach and look into how this architecture is going to evolve to the future to guarantee like the sustainability of the business, but also the opportunities for new revenue. So we believe that the standardization on top of a common foundation across all of the workloads is of paramount importance. And we are here talking about like basically everything that needs to be done so that this transformation actually happens and then we unlock the way for the future. So, of course, that encompasses a lot of the things that we're doing here, but like the overall story is around that, how you position yourself and your network to be successful in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, the industry has been talking about open RAN for a while, but it sounds like the real challenge here is getting the underlining infrastructure right. And that's something that you're spending a lot of time here at the show talking about with your customers. Give us some insight into those conversations. Exactly. So uh, as you pointed out, so the discussions about ORAN have been happening for a while. We talk to about this topic with our customers all the time. And one common topic that comes in these discussions is that, well, I can implement ORAN, I can basically just get there and create a cloud infrastructure just for that, but will that cut it, right? Will things actually scale, will I see the benefits? And the answer is unfortunately no, right? So to actually get the full benefits of open RAN that go beyond just mixing and matching building blocks from different vendors, you have to undergo a transformation of the network architecture as a whole define a single foundation, a single cloud stack that is going to be utilized across the board from RAN all the way to, to the core, OSS, IT, and so on, and then deploy your open RAN infrastructure, deploy your 5G core infrastructure, and so on, because that's the only way for you to achieve the, the benefits of the cloud architecture, to really achieve cloud economics, right? So reutilizing resources, and really being flexible enough to be able to launch new services. That's on the technology side, but beyond technology, there's transformation needed in internal processes, so you can reap the benefits of like the evolution of silicon faster. There is transformation how these uh, CSPs are launching and building new services. So there's a lot of work, but also really exciting work. <laughs> That's definitely true. You know, the more you hear about it, it, it seems like all the promises that were made with 5G, it seems a little further away than yeah. uh, many of us thought from the outside perspective. So where would you say we are in this journey to mm -hmm. achieving what your these services you're describing? Yeah. So with 5G, uh, the industry took what I would say is the most natural route. So it deployed the initial coverage of 5G to sell broadband. This is great. I mean, 5G is faster, provides a better service uh, overall, and which is great for consumers. But like the big promise for 5G was not only faster speeds. It is lower latency, enterprise applications, really transforming the way we work, transforming the way we enjoy content and so on, and transforming the way enterprises operate, right? And that is the next step, right? So these initial deployments, mostly based in 5G known standalone, they brought the speed, they didn't bring the latency, right? That is coming now with the 5G standalone deployments that are happening. And then the next step is to really be able to onboard applications and get the industry ready to go out and sell these services. That is the next step that is ahead of us. And coming back to my topic of uh, the transformation of foundation, it is crucial because you cannot onboard new services if you have a stack that is closed at the end, right? So that's what's coming next. Right, well here inside your booth, you're teasing what could come next, right, with the exactly. demos here. Can you just walk through what you have on display? Yeah, so we're talking about a wide array of things, right? So lots of focus on our new announcements that uh, 
complement the story that we've been talking about. Uh, we have we, we announced the Delta Telecom Infrastructure Automation Suite. So it is an automation package that works on the on the lower part of the stack. So servers plus CAS. Uh, it is basically built to automate the basic process of deployment and lifecycle management of this infrastructure, collaborating with all the process of like, you know, getting things to run faster in the network, optimizing operations and so on. We have the second release also of our Dell Telecom infrastructure blocks with Red Hat. This is uh, a solution that is fully integrated from factory that includes server plus cloud stack plus automation. So it makes it much faster to deploy cloud infrastructure in telecom. And we announced uh, a certification program in our open telecom ecosystem lab for workloads to run on these infrastructure blocks. So we are working with partners that are developing 5G core, OSS, BSS workloads to get them pre-certified to run on infrastructure blocks uh, basically from, from day one. So the focus is really on making the adoption of these transformed architecture as easy, as simple as possible, and as cost effective as possible for our customers. Right, and your partners. I know Dell works with a lot of partners, and you can just see all the opportunities as you walk through this booth of how they can build services on top Absolutely of Absolutely right. So we are talking, we have a lot of partners actually physically present in the booth. We're talking about works that we're doing with a lot of them. We have already onboarded uh, tens of partners in our community, lots of them working actively in our uh, in our lab in Austin and in, and in Cork, Ireland. So yeah, the partnerships are extremely important with, for us. The latest big announcement on the partnership domain is the collaboration with Nokia, where we have agreed to be the preferred vendor to substitute their airframe products, which were their server solutions. Uh, and we agreed to be to utilize Nokia private wireless solutions as our uh, preferred solution for private wireless towards, uh, especially towards the enterprise market. So it is an, yet another example where uh, we help Nokia get closer to enterprise customers while we are also working with Nokia to help the, the telecommunications customers as well. So these type of partnerships are going to be a very common in, in these evolved telecommunications industry because everybody can collaborate a little bit with each one. No one is going to have the answer for everything all at once. Right, right. and as we talk about getting standards off the ground and all that, exactly. all makes sense to partner. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Interesting Thanks conversation. So yeah. And for everyone at home interested in learning more, be sure to stay tuned with Light Readings Insider Guide from Mobile World Congress.